This was so amazing that I just could not stand it. I couldn't wait until Monday when Brian White will be on to talk about this. It is, well, I've hinted about some of this and, and others have kind of discussed it on the channel, but I think I've been missing the reality of it. Um, I think that I've understood a little bit uh, deeper what's going to take place. Um, Elon, when Elon says that FSD is no longer required to be supervised, which may happen between now and 10, 10, might happen between now and the end of the year, might not happen until January or February, but there's going to be a day when that happens. And maybe before that, maybe just because of what's said on 10, 10, or maybe we're just so close. At some point, a lot of folks are going to realize that this is way more than just a new feature for an automobile. Okay. This idea that I'm going to present to you today, I don't think Elon, I'm, I listen to pretty much every word that comes out of Elon's mouth that's publicly out there. And I don't think he's talked about what I'm going to lay out. And I don't think anybody else has either. In fact, let me know in the comments below. Has somebody else talked about this before? Because I think I would know about it. So here's the question. What is going to happen to car sales when robo-taxi is a thing? Now, I've said when FSD becomes a thing that that will increase, you know, consumer interest. You know, that word of mouth thing, you'll be showing it to your neighbor. You'll be telling your neighbor that has a Tesla. They should really download it. You know, there'll be more uptake and more people will go and buy it because they'll want the experience because now it'll be real and they will have seen it. They will have tried it before they go and so, yeah, there'll be more uptake. That's going to be great for profits. There's going to be more people going in and buying them. That's going to be great for increasing the overall sales. But that's only level one. There's also this whole business of Grok being fully integrated. Once Grok can talk to you in the car and have a real real conversation, you know, kind of like uh, R2-D2 or, uh, you know, that kind of stuff from the old movies, talk to you like a like a friend. That's going to be a big feature. That's going to be amazing. You know, people will want to buy the car just for that feature, but that's not what I'm talking about. This is completely different. And so here are the questions that I have. What's going to happen to the price of cars when robo-taxi is a thing? What? Why would Tesla ever sell another car without FSD? Why wouldn't they require every single car? Every single car would have it. It'll just be part of the price. Um, it won't be, you know, it won't be an option to buy one without FSD. And how will regular families afford a Tesla after FSD is fully autonomous? I mean, remember Elon said that it would make the cars worth seventy-five to a hundred thousand dollars, something like that. And so, no, are people going to go out and buy a hundred thousand or seventy-five thousand dollar car just to pop us around in the neighborhood or go to work and back just because it's autonomous, just because? It's like a chauffeur-driven car? I don't think so. So what is going to happen? What is going to happen to auto sales? Well, all right. Once robo-taxi is possible, meaning FSD is solved, there's going to be an order surge like we've never seen before. It's not going to be, it's going to be a bigger surge than what we saw with Cybertruck. Because you see, if a robo-taxi can earn people, you and me, our neighbors, our friends, 50,000 a year after all expenses, I mean, net, 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 in their pocket, before tax, of course. Well, generally speaking, then a small business buyer would pay on the order of at least $100,000 for that asset. Now, whether they buy that asset from Tesla for 75 to 100,000 or whether they buy it from you your used vehicle for 75 to 100,000 they're going to be willing to pay that much to get that stream of income that $50,000 a year that expectation of that kind of an income stream now in the beginning it's not going to be absolutely 100% sure but there'll be lots of people that'll say not much of a risk here compared to the op the opportunity to the reward so one way or the other, there are going to be people that are going to start going out and they're going to start looking at that, pay, paying fifty to $100,000, seventy five to $100,000 to get that asset so they can get, after two years of paying it off, they got eight, 10, who knows how many years of 
$50,000 a year just rolling in with almost no effort. I mean, with almost no effort. This is not like where you have to go do your own advertising. This is not like where you have to go out and like I do with when I had Puro, you have to go pick people up and bring them and blah, blah, blah. You know, no, no, no. This is, you push the app and let the system know that the car can now be taken out into the robo taxi fleet. And then if you need it back, you push another button or you tell it in advance, I need it back at five o'clock. So if Tesla has a $25,000 car or 30 or 40, whatever thousand dollar car, and they sell it to me and they sell it to me for less than a hundred thousand dollars, um, then um, they're likely, I'm sorry, let me say that again. If they sell it to me for $25,000, period, well, then I'm going to turn right around and sell it to somebody for seventy five dollars to $100,000. And then that person is going to, if it's not already got FSD, they're going to buy FSD or, or pay the subscription. So I'm going to get that middleman price, just like we talked about before with Cybertruck. We saw this happening with, Model Ys and Model Threes during the during the pandemic, um, so people are going to pay a middleman. That, well, first of all, the Model Y that I've got in my garage right now will, instead of being worth whatever it's worth today, maybe thirty thousand. All of a sudden, it's going to be worth a hundred thousand because it's got FSD. Or if I can't pass it along, no, I think it goes with the car, right? Not with me. That's right. So it goes with the car. So they're going to pay a hundred thousand dollars for that car, seventy-five to hundred thousand. Um, or if I buy one and I buy it under price, then I'm going to make that middleman profit. But Tesla's not going to want that to happen, so they need to capture that profit instead of the middleman. Um, but, you know, if they charge 100000 then somebody that just wants it to go back and forth to work, how are they going to afford it? Well, I have been talking about this for a while, but I would expect all, well, not for a while, for a couple of days. <laughs> I would expect all the used cars all the use threes, Ys, Ss, Xs, et cetera, et cetera. They're just going to be gone. They're all going to be purchased. People are going to go out there just like they would when you know that there's a special on and nobody else knows about. That's called arbitrage. When you know something and other people don't, and people are going to start buying those up before the, the owners know that the price is, that the value is going to be there so much more than it already is. And there's just not going to be any use uh, Teslas out there at all. Uh, Hertz, as we talked about the other day on this channel, Hertz is going to be the one that's going to look stupid <laughs> because they're selling the right now, hand over fist, that they can just keep them and wait a couple of more months. Anyway, just nuts. All right. So now it's unclear how these new potential business owners will know when to quit. In other words, they'll buy up all the used cars and then they'll buy up cars from Tesla until Tesla raises the price to include some kind of a of a bigger price tag for the FSD. So people will start buying them and there'll be this waiting list. And then at some point, I think Tesla will change the rules and they'll say, okay, if you want this for commercial purposes, it's going to cost you 75, 80, who knows, some number, way more. And I think they'll have a separate deal for the regular homeowner, the regular business owner, you know, who just wants it for commuting and it'll be right on your contract that if you're only paying 30000 for this car, you're not going to be able to use it for a commercial robo-taxi, you know, on the, on the robo-taxi fleet. Then later on, a year from now, you decide you do want to put it in the robo-taxi fleet, you will pay a $50,000 upfront cost in order to make that happen. So anyway, going back to the original concept, so in the beginning, people that will be arbitraging will be thinking, I want a fleet, I want five, I want seven, I want 10, maybe I just want two, but I just like to have one, maybe I just want one. And But people that are now Uber drivers or have done some of this kind of stuff in the past, I'll be like, no, I want to get a car. So they just go buy one for maybe as low as 30 grand, 25,000, using the $7,500 discount from the government, et cetera. And all of a sudden, it's, there's going to be a line of people waiting. Now, there's also going to be a point at which maybe that fills up. There's just the folks that want to do that. We run out of those folks. So maybe there will be a time when there'll be a flat, the, that, this will all flat line. I'm not sure. It's hard to know because it'll probably depend on how fast the robotaxi thing just 
flies off the shelf. How much, how many cities do we have and how many states are allowing it? How many people are getting money off of it and reporting it on X and other places on online to their friends or to their family? How many people have got their first car out there making money and they just start buying up three, five more in order to take advantage? So anyway, I do believe that Tesla will offer a non-commercial version that might have a $10,000 price tag for FSD and maybe a commercial version where a $50,000 price tag for FSD. Um, I think that's the only way this can work. I also think Tesla should include FSD and just include it in the price. So if it's $30,000 car, it just is a $40,000 car. There is no such thing as the $30,000 car. But again, maybe, maybe there'll be a point in the future, maybe it'll be next year, maybe it'll be 2026, where they'll have enough capacity to sell every car they can make with FSD, but then they've got leftovers. It's back down to, you know, only a week wait or two week wait. Well, maybe they could put some out there and say, okay, you don't have to buy it with FSD or you can buy it without FSD and, and put on the uh, subscription if you like. So what do you think? Am I crazy here? See, I, I think first of all, you get an increase in the number of cars sold because of the feature. And it's gonna be talked about. Great word of mouth, huge amounts of word of mouth. So that you get an increase because of the feature. Then you get an increase of Gracchus on there because of that feature. That's gonna be huge. I think that might be bigger. Well, let's just say it's gonna be huge. And then you get an increase because of the people that wanna turn it into a business. And that will be an increase that will just absolutely drive the the value of the cars up as well as create long lines of people waiting to get their car. What do you think about that? Am I completely wrong or am I completely right or somewhere in the middle? I'd love to have your comments and thoughts about that. Don't forget that later tonight, we will have, of course, Monday, the Monday morning show where we talk about all the things that are coming up this week that are going to impact Tesla and or the stock stock market. Um, there will be a show later today. I have no idea what it's going to be about, uh, but there will be a show. It might be your questions and answers. Maybe it'll be questions and answers from this specific show. So give me lots and lots of questions about what you think about this or comments about what you think about this. And maybe I'll devote the entire show at lunch to this idea. Because guess what? This is as big as the entire concept. Is that right? In other words, it's one thing if FSD is successful and then we make money off of robo-taxis and robo-taxi you know, increases the share price because people can see how much money Tesla is going to make from that. It's an entirely other thing if all of a sudden it creates a massive, massive increase in the immediate uptake of vehicles and the immediate uptake of FSD. It'll have a, the impact will be, right? I mean, seriously big. Did I get something wrong here? Okay, let me know. And then join Patreon if you find this valuable. Was that useful? Do you think that helps you to think about your stock better? It, you know, Patreon, it's only three bucks a month at the bottom. And if you go at the five or $10 level, you get some free stuff. And then if you go at the $50 level, you're my friend forever. <laughs> it's been great talking to you.